and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and in this lesson, we're going to learn how to add chords to the Wild Horses. Let's get started by checking out the score. So once again, here's our score for the Wild Horses, and we're going to figure out when to play chords. And that's where these arrows are going to help. Now, you'll remember that in music, a quarter note takes one beat. And let's represent that with this heart shape that I'm drawing. And then two eighth notes, like these, can both share a beat. So you'll notice this first arrow points to this first beat. Then on beat two, there's no arrow, which means we won't play a chord on, on these two notes. Now, this arrow here points to our third beat, and then again we have a beat with no arrow. And you'll start to see a pattern here where there's an arrow every other beat. So notice we have a beat and then a beat with no arrow. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Basically, every time I'm saying one, that's where we'll play a chord. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Let's just try that once. Just say one, two as you tap. Go. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now let's try to sing while we tap. Ready, go. This is the dance of the wild and running horses. Good. And then line two will be exactly the same. This is the dance of the wild and running horses. Then on line three, you'll see this note. No chords, both hands play melody. So we don't have to worry about chords here. The left hand and right hand will both play this uh, melody part. And then back to line four, we're returning to our A pattern. And it's the same chords as before. This is the dance of the wild and running horses. So let's try to play these chords on the piano now. So today we're going to be playing chords with our right hand. Let's go ahead and take your right hand finger one and find D, a step above middle C here. And your finger five will be on A. So that's our Do and So. Remember for playing chords, you want to just let these three middle fingers just float up a little bit. And for Wild Horses, we're just going to use these two notes, a more simple chord. I know that you, you know how to do a three note chord now, but this one will sound best with this open chord. So these middle fingers can just float a little bit up in the air and then just use arm weight to gently drop and then float back up. You want to keep your wrist relaxed, your fingers relaxed. And just use gravity to drop into that chord, then float up. Now, I'm exaggerating. You don't have to float up high. You're just going to gently lift. Your fingers are going to stay very close to the keys. So try this with me. And remember, we saw in the score that we're going to play a chord every two beats. So let's count one, two, one, two. And a quick reminder to keep your pinky near the tip as it plays, not flat. See how that collapsed my hand? By using the tip of your pinky, that keeps your hand shape in a good place. So try this with me. Count one, two, one, two. Play chords and count. One, two, one, two, one, two. Good. You want that to feel really comfortable. So pause if you need extra practice with that. Otherwise, let's now try the next step, which is to sing the wild horses while we play the chords. So now we're having to think about two things at the same time. We're going to only play a chord every two beats while we sing. Okay, try it with me. Ready, go. This is the dance of the wild and running horses. This is the dance of the wild and running horses. Good, and remember in the the score, you'll see these arrows that show you every time you're supposed to play a chord. Now, I'd like you to pause the video and practice that by yourself a couple of times, playing the chords in the correct spot as you sing the lyrics, and then press play to go on.
Now, it's time for the challenge of doing it hands together. Our right hand's going to play the chords while the left hand plays the melody. It will sound like this. This is the dance of the wild and running horses. This. Now, pause the video and work on that, putting that hands together, and then press play to go on to line three. And remember, it may be tricky and really frustrating at first. That's always how it goes when you're putting things hands together. But just keep trying, try, 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 until you, your fingers figure it out. Now, when we get to line three, you'll remember the instructions are both hands play melody, no chords. So now both hands together, stamp on the ground now, tramp on the ground now. Now pause the video and work on line three, hands together, then press play to go on. Good, and then we're back to line four. Now, we've gone over how to play the entire thing hands together, so pause the video and now try from line one all the way to the end, see if you can play it hands together. Try it as many times as you need to start to feel like you're getting the hang of it, and then press play and I'll show you how we can play it along with the backing track. Now, once you feel like you have this mastered, you'll be ready to play along with the backing track from the practice album. Now, remember, on the practice album, you'll hear a short introduction, then you'll hear four clicks, and then you start playing on the next beat. You'll play through the entire song. You can just use left hand alone, or if you want to do it with chords, that works too. Then, after you've played through the song once, you'll have some time to improvise. And then, when you hear four clicks again, then you'll play through the entire song one more time. So let me demonstrate how that goes. You can just listen this time, or if you want to try and play along, you can. Here's the backing track from the practice album. One, two, three, four. right hand or left hand in any D minor pentascale. Now you notice there that after the improvisation I was playing both hands melody. You can use chords, you can do just left hand. It, it's okay to experiment with different ways of playing the same song. I want you to own it and try being creative and see what you can create musically. Remember when you're improvising it's okay to come up to a different D minor pentascale. It's fun to explore the different parts of the piano. Remember, the Wild Horses backing track is on the practice album, which you can get from our website. Great work learning how to add chords to the Wild Horses. And congratulations on finishing the last video lesson in Unit 2! Hooray! Hooray! You rock star! Keep it up! You're doing really well! Girl. To develop any skill or talent requires lots of practice. And I hope you're finding that with your consistent practice, you can succeed at growing your talent for making music at the piano and reading music and even composing music too. I've really enjoyed working with you through these first two units. We have so much more fun music to learn ahead. By the way, I love hearing my students perform. 
So once you have the wild horses mastered with chords, please make a video of yourself performing and share it with me online. Once again, congratulations on reaching the end of unit two. Screen fist bump. Boom. Thanks so much for watching and learning with me, and I'll see you next time in Unit 3. Hey guys, what's this? This is the dance of the wild and running horses! Oh, of course. And we're celebrating finishing Unit 2! Come on! Yeah, let's dance.